Good evening, everybody. We are live in Conway, Arkansas, here at New Generation Church. Excited to uh, be here with you on this evening. Uh, please begin to share this message for us so that uh, we can get some viewers in to hear what God is about to say to us. If you would just say hey to me, uh, speak to me so I can know you out there. And uh, please just share this message have a few things we want to announce first and then we'll we'll go into the scriptures that, that we have uh, for this evening. I'm going to share this myself, so y'all please share it with me. Look forward to seeing everybody on this evening. And share the message and say hey. It is awesome to be here in the house of the Lord. What's up, Angel? Hey, Jamisa. How y'all doing? Hey, Antoya, DJ's left. y'all doing thank y'all for logging in go ahead and share this message i'm gonna give a few announcements and then we will head into the word of god i'm very excited about the word of god that, that we have for this evening hope y'all had a great week god has been good to us uh, he is good so hope y'all had a great week we are starting a new series uh Praise and Thanksgiving, we'll be going through the book of Psalms this month, and we're very excited about that just to prepare our hearts for this Thanksgiving season. So uh, be in prayer with us. And if you would, I mean, hey, just go ahead and drop some lines about how God has been good to you. Just let us know how God been good to you. Just drop some lines in there for us. What has God done for you? I know he's done a whole lot for me. What? What has he done for you? Just drop that in there. Uh, let everybody know how good God has been to you. Uh, thank him for what he's done because he is an awesome God. He is a great God. And while y'all doing that, I'm going to give y'all a few announcements. Just super excited. Uh, on this past Friday, uh, we had a great uh, Halloween event. Um, I think it went very well. It had a real interesting name. I, I let the whole team come up with that. I mean, it went very well. Um, served, I think, over 100, 100 kids. Uh, they had an excellent time. We posted all the pictures on Facebook. So so thank you all very, very much. The kids, they, they had so much fun. Gave away free candy, free popcorn, just free to the community and our church members. We had an outstanding, outstanding time. Thank you to Pastor Henry for... Um, for leading that event. He had college students come out. Man, they just served and they took care of the whole event. And we just wanna just thank God for Pastor Henry's leadership and then thank God for all the college students that came out to just help serve and that was just awesome. So to be able to see the body of Christ just just operating together, serving the community. Then um, Coach, Coach and uh, Ken and myself, we went out into a neighborhood in Conway uh, to uh, bless somebody with a gift and then we had the opportunity to share the gospel with them and they gave their life to Christ and we were just so excited about that tears of joy just happened and man I mean it was just a great time on Friday night we had people giving their life to the Lord and we was just able to serve kids and families man I mean just beautiful so so uh, just thank God for that man that, that's that's just beautiful in itself and so we thank God for that and and I uh, just wanted to let y'all know that God is doing something here at New Generation Church and, and for the body of Christ, and we're just very thankful for that. Another announcement is uh, Bible study is going to start on Thursday. Um, it will not start this Tuesday because Tuesday is Super Super Tuesday. Uh, we, there will be a uh, announcement of, 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 of the president, and so there'll be watch night for a lot of people. So, so please be in prayer for uh, just the whole process. Uh, regardless of who you're voting for, regardless of what's going on, remember, neither candidate died on a cross for you. And so just remember that 
and remember that we're praying for whoever wins and we're praying for the whole country um, not to go into hate but replace that hate with love because at the end of the day we are citizens of heaven um, and we just live here on earth so just just remember that whatever happens on Tuesday who we serve and please go vote if you have not voted um, exercise your right to vote uh, put your voice out there uh, please go vote by Tuesday so that you can your, your voice can be heard please do that Speaking of Bible study, just wanted to let y'all know whoever pre-registers for our Bible study, and you do have to RSVP uh, so that we can uh, go by our regathering plan. It's on our website, but you will receive a complimentary face mask for the church, from the church, a new real nice uh, face mask, yeah, <laughs> with the logo on there. It's all, you know, nice. Bam, gotcha. Um, um, so awesome. You get that complimentary face mask, and then you'll also receive a complimentary uh, hand sanitizer, uh, new generation hand sanitizer. We all need to stay safe and stay clean, amen? So sanitize those hands, and you can come get it. Complimentary uh, hand sanitizer, complimentary new generation face mask when you pre-register for the Bible study. It is limited seating only. Um, we are preparing to see what it's going to look like as we go into next year, as we pray and plan about reopening the church for Sunday service. So please register for that. We're going to start on this, this Thursday. Please share the message as we get started. Please share that message. Remember to vote. Remember to register for Bible study. Uh, there's limited space on there. Please read the regathering plan. And also just want to let y'all know that we had an awesome time at our uh, event that we had on Friday. Like I say, we served over uh, 100, 100 kids, and it was just awesome to see those kids so excited, the parents excited, just a fun and safe way to just have a little fun. Uh, took pictures of them. They're all located on the website, so please uh, go, go check that out. If your child was in that event, that, all those pictures have been posted. And like I said, a few of us during that event went to go bless someone else and then we were having a conversation with them and shared the gospel of Jesus Christ and we had two people make um, confessions of faith. And so they have repented for their sins and accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts. I don't know what else, um, I don't know anything more, more exciting to get, you know, we can get excited about that because God blessed us. Uh, God did that. God was able to maneuver and uh, have the college kids serving and uh, helping families and then send some men out to go share the gospel with the family. I mean, only God can do something like that. And so I'm just super excited about that. Amen. We are about to get started because I do not want to um, waste your time. I want to honor your time. So if you would just share this message, share this message. Amen. Speak to me. Feel free to speak to me. Say, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Thank you all for logging on. Hey, Taja, hey, baby. Thank you for, for the hand praises. Amen. Hey, Sister, Sister Turner, it was good seeing you up for the communion that you came and got earlier. Thank you for coming up. We are about to get started. Uh, just wanted to say um, it is an honor to serve here at New Generation Church. Uh, founding Pastor Tremaine Harris, he is out on today. He has asked me to stand and preach, and I plan on standing, preaching, and then sitting down. Amen. Amen. Yeah, speak to each other. Say what's up to each other. Hey, Aunt Sent, what's up? Thank you for logging on. Thank you for logging on. And I'm about to get started with the word that God has given. Amen. Again, we are doing a series uh, on praise and thanksgiving. We'll be going through book of Psalms for this month, uh, just thanking God for who he is and giving him the praise. 
Uh, regardless of what's been going on this year, God still deserves our praise and thanksgiving. So this evening, would you, uh, in your Bibles, go to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Psalm 105, I'll be reading for, from the NIV. Scripture reads, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all the wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and his judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. The first scripture right there says give praise to the Lord proclaim his name on this evening I would like to talk on the subject praise and proclaim his name praise and proclaim his name I'm from a Baptist background so I say things three times praise and proclaim his name. Before we walk through these scriptures, I think it's very important to give some definitions or some clarities to some terms that will help us walk through this text. Praise is used in this particular text a lot. There are different types of praise that you will find throughout the Bible. In the New Testament, you see praise, and praise is more of um, about compliments towards God. Compliments. God, you are awesome. God, you are magnificent. God, you are excellent. We give God compliments. We give God praise. Well, there is another form of praise that is used throughout the Old Testament that, watch this, it is, um, it is, it is a synonymous for worship. Worship means the expression of your thanks. So in this particular passage, while it is great to praise the Lord and compliment the Lord and tell the Lord how great he is, in this particular passage, we are focusing on worshiping God and thanking him for what he has done. So the scripture will read something like this. Thank the Lord for what he has done. Watch this. We are to thank the Lord. The Lord, our God. Jesus, the Christ. We are to thank him. We give thanks to God for what he has done. He doesn't say thank another person. He doesn't say thank another thing or thank another idea. He says praise and thank God. Then he says proclaim right there in the text his name. Proclaim means to speak. Let the words come out of your mouth. So it's one thing to think about how great he is is one thing to, to think and say thank you, but it's another thing to actually say it. And that is what's going on in this text. He is encouraging us, the writer of this psalm is encouraging us to thank the Lord and speak it out loud. We are to say it with our mouth. God, I thank you for everything that you've done for me. God, I know we may have had a tough year of what's been going on throughout our country, but I still thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for loving me. God, I thank you for saving me. God, I thank you for just who you are in my life. God, I thank you for I still have a family. I thank you for I still got a job. I thank you for even if I don't have a job. God, I thank you. I thank you for choosing a nobody like me. I thank you for choosing somebody who, who was lost. I thank you for finding me. God, I thank you. Say it with your mouth is what he is talking about. Praise and proclaim his name. And then he keeps going in the text is right there. In verse number two, he says, sing to him. That's my first point. 
praise him with songs. All right? Now, I ain't no singing preacher. And I wouldn't dare do that to you. But what he's talking about in this text is actually singing a song. We are to express it through a song. Uh-huh. That's what it says. Watch this. Songs set the atmosphere for praise. Have you ever just been in an environment to where people are lifting up the name of Jesus, that people are thanking God for everything that he has done? The songs set the atmosphere. They are opening their mouths and they're telling God, thank you for what you have done. Set the atmosphere. My question for you this evening, what type of songs are you used to? What type of atmosphere are you setting in your house? What type of atmosphere are you setting in your car? What type of atmosphere are you setting just period? Is it an atmosphere that is about thanking God? That's what he says in the text. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Uh-huh. That's what it says. He, he, we praise God by singing to him. We, we thank God by singing to him. Whatever it is, you, you put on a song and you just begin to just, 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 just be a part of the atmosphere that is about lifting up the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, through my song. Now, I can't sing, but I promise you I can hum a little bit and I'm going to mess up the words when I sing it, but I'm still singing to God. So for those of us who can't sing, we still got to sing praises to God. Yep, this says it right there in the text. If I want to give God praise, I have to sing songs about my God. Not sing songs about myself, not sing songs about other people. I'm talking about singing songs about our Jesus. Right there in the text, that's what it says. Then also in the text I see right there in verse number two, it says, sing to him. Sing praise to him. Watch this. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Point number two. Praise him by sharing your testimony. I'm going to say that one more time. Praise him by sharing your testimony. I'm going to say that one more time. Praise him by sharing your testimony. Man, um, um, in college, I... Um, Henry, some friends and I, we were in the living room and uh, we were playing, I think it was Halo. And we were having a good time. And one of us said, hey, I want to go to the beach, man. So a couple of us decided that we were going to go to the beach right then and there. Within two hours, Henry, we got in the car and we started driving to Panama City Beach. From Little Rock, Arkansas to Panama City Beach, this is when we were in college. That lets you know we had no priorities whatsoever, right? Right, And so, so we were literally playing a video game in college. It was during spring break and said, man, I wanna go hang on the beach and go, and we went to Panama City Beach. Within a couple of hours, so we get on the road, we drive to Panama City Beach. We didn't even have hotel reservations. We just drove down there, some young college kids. We went there, we got there, saw the beach, we got all excited, like, oh man, it's about to go down, we about to have a great time, and so we got to the beach, we saw the beach, we went to a store, got some stuff, that we can have fun on the beach, I found this little, like a little surf looking board, and then one full surfboard, like a half surfboard, I don't even know what it's called, and I, and, I, and, and I got that half looking surfboard, I got to the beach, we all jumped in, having a good time, man, all of us was getting in, the, in there, having a good time, started catching the waves and kept on going. So we start going back towards it into the ocean, catching the waves, letting the waves hit us, just having a good time and jumping into the waves. I'm jumping, I'm trying to jump over waves with my little, my little board. I'm, I'm just jumping through the waves. And one of my homeboys, bless his soul, he's passed away now, by the, a friend by the name of Jason Jackson. He's in the military and he says, hey man, it's getting a little bit too deep. We probably want to stop. You know me, I'm, I'm, I'm big headed. I said, nah man, let's keep on going. I should have known something because he, he was in the military and he said, it's getting a little bit too deep. But I kept on going. Then my other friend, Raymond, Raymond was like, bruh, man, we probably want to stop, bro. We gotta keep on. So I kept on going. Kept on going. I'm, whoosh, 
catch it away, bam, catch it away. My, my friends, they, my college, my frat brothers, they, 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 they done went back to the shore. I'm catching these waves. I'm having the best time of my life. I did not know that on the pier deck that there was like these red things that said, do not cross these lines. <laughs> I ain't know that. I'm going and I look up and they say, do not cross these lines. I said, oh, I think I done went too far. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe it's time to turn around. So I decided to start turning around, and I turned around, and I started trying to swim back towards the shore. I'm on this little scuba board, and I'm jumping, and I'm going, and I'm swimming, and I get catch on a wave, and I come back. But here's the interesting thing. I was going like this, but it kept pulling me back deeper into the ocean. I said, something ain't right. It's supposed to, the wave's supposed to take me down to the, to the land, but it kept bringing me backwards, man. Isn't that how sometimes seeing work? You find yourself getting caught up in something. <laughs> you find yourself getting caught up in something. And when you try to turn around, sometimes it's too late and it just keep on bringing you back in. That, that, that's how easy seeing can just creep up on your life. Man, and oh, my bad, there was a spiritual digression. Let me get back to the point. So, 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 so check this out, check this out. I'm getting there, I'm swimming. And I'm trying to get there. It's steady taking me back. Man, I started getting so terrified because it kept taking me back. I couldn't even touch the bottom of the ocean no more. I'm like, oh my God, what am I finna do? I started waving at my friends like, help, help, help. And they couldn't hear me. They thought I was just like, yeah, yeah. And so they was like, this what's up, this what's up. I'm like, no, help me. And all, I'm going through all this stuff. I started thinking about what am I gonna do? My friends can't help me. I start thinking about what if I pass away out here? Who gonna tell my mama I died? I start, I start trying to swim and swim. My arm got so tired, watch this man. I couldn't help myself get out of this situation. My friends couldn't help me get out of this situation. Regardless of how much I was thinking about my mother and who was gonna tell her that I done died out here because I done went to Panama City Beach on a fling. You know, I'm over here going through. All I can tell you is, God got me out that situation. See, sometimes I can't get myself out the situation. My friends can't get me out the situation, nor family can get me out the situation. The only person that can get me out of that situation is God. Watch this. The scripture says, tell everybody about his wonderful acts. God saved my life that day. No one can get the credit but God. Uh huh. That's what the scripture says right there in the text in verse number two B. Tell of all his wonderful acts. That was wonderful that day. It was for me because I could have been gone. Right there in the text. Keeps going. Glory. Glory. In his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord for strength. Let's stop right there. Next point. Praise his strength. Okay, okay. First thing we got, right, is that we're going to praise him through song. The second thing we have is that we're going to praise him by sharing our testimony. And now we're at the point to where we are going to praise his strength. Strength is defined as his help, right? We have to praise God for his help. God will help us get out of a situation. Did you not see how God helped me get out of my situation? God will give you the strength that you need to get out of the situation, even when you can't get yourself out of the situation. And what God is saying at this particular point is that he wants you to give him thanks for getting you out of situations that you couldn't get yourself out of. Only he could get you out of that situation. I think of the, um, the, um, in the gym when there's guys working out and they're lifting weights and they're lifting a heavy amount of weight and they put on more weight and they lift more weight. They put on more weight and they lift more weight and what they do, they get these guys called spotters. And the spotter will come over there and make sure that the weight don't fall down on them and cave in their chest. So the spotter will help them lift the weight up because they cannot lift the weight up themselves. What I'm trying to tell you is that is exactly how God is with us. When we can't do nothing with our own strength, God comes in and he lifts us up. 
He gives us the strength that we need. He uses his mighty power to get us out of that situation. That is what's going on in this text. He is giving us his strength. Praise God for all the strength that he then gave you to get through the situation that you done have been going through. Remember that he did that for you. That's what it says right there in the text. Praise him for his strength. Look at the Lord and his strength. Watch this. Seek his face always. Now this is, this is beautiful. He says, seek his face always. If I am going to seek God's face, how do I get in the face with God? This is very interesting. Please hear me. Please hear me. Please hear me. If I am going to get in the face of God, I have to get in the face of God through prayer. Okay, okay, okay. And it says right there, seek his face always. God is saying that he needs us. If we want to be in the face with the king, we have to go through prayer and be in his face. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So our prayer life has to be consistent. We always need to be in his face. If you want the audience of the king, you got to get in the king face. And the way you get in the king face is through prayer. How is your prayer life? When you wake up in the morning, are you in God's face? When you go to sleep at night, are you in God's face? When you're going through stuff throughout the entire day or even when something is not even going on, are you in God's face? And the way I get in his faith is his face is that I have to go to him in prayer. Oh, and I ain't talking about the give me, give me, give me prayer. I'm talking about the type of prayer that'll, that'll make you look at yourself type of prayer. I'm talking about the prayer that you have when you're, it doesn't matter who you are. We are required. We, God is telling us to seek his face. How is your prayer life? Are you in God's face? If you had an opportunity to be with the king right now, to be in his face, how would you prepare to be with the king? Praise him. Praise him when you get in his face. Tell him how great he is. Thank him for everything that he has done. Continually stay in his face and tell him thank you for what you have already done for me. Stay in his face. Seek his face always. Then right here, I love this scripture, verse number five. I'm walking through the text. Verse number five. Remember the wonders he has done. His miracles, his judgments that he has pronounced. My next point, remember what he has done for you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, right here in the text, we have to understand that he is telling the Israelites to remember what he has done for them. So he's talking about everything that has led up to where they are right now. He talks about the story of Abraham. He talks about in, 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 in Psalm 105, he talks about the story of Abraham. He talks about the story of Jacob. He talks about the story of Joseph. He talks about the story of Moses. If you look at the story of Moses, he's saying, remember what I did for Moses. You're familiar with the story of Moses. If you're not, I got you. Check this out. Mo, uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph, if you're not familiar with that story, here it is. Joseph, he is a young man who has visions and dreams. He shares his dreams with his brothers. His brothers get jealous of him and they throw him in a pit. His own brothers throw him in a pit because he is sharing his dreams and visions. They throw him in the pit and then he is sold into slavery. A man by the name of Potiphar who is a rich man and has a very high position, he buys Joseph. He puts Joseph in his house as a servant. Joseph, watch this, in the midst of being thrown in a pit and in the midst of being a slave in Potiphar's house, he still gives praises to the Lord. As he is in Potiphar's house, the scripture says that he, as, since he was a part of Potiphar's house, he blessed Potiphar's house. He blessed what was on the inside of Potiphar's house. 
He served Potiphar. He served his house. He, he was a good servant. And then there was a woman that was Potiphar's wife who thought that Joseph was very attractive. She tried to sleep with Joseph, but Joseph, since he was so faithful to who he believed in, which was God, and he was so faithful to his master, who was Potiphar, he did not sleep with his wife. <laughs> uh-huh. Then she gets so upset, she accuses him of rape. Isn't that something? He's been thrown in a pit by his brothers. He comes to Potiphar's house. Uh-huh. He comes to Potiphar's house. He serves Potiphar's house. He does the best job that he can do. The Lord blesses Potiphar's house. The wife come try to sleep with him. He tells her no. And so now he's arrested for attempted rape. Ain't that something? So now they throw him into the prison. And what does Joseph do? He still praises the Lord while he's even in prison. Let me pause right there. When you're going through your situation, are you praising the Lord and serving the Lord even when you're going through? I know it ain't easy, but I promise you right here in the text, that's what he's doing. Joseph is praising the Lord. He's serving the Lord. He's still being obedient to God's word. That's what he does. Then he gets to the prison and he starts serving the prison guards. Hey, he said he does so good. They put him in command within the prisons as the prisoners. And, he's, and so the, the, the guards, they, they, they have a sweet spot for him. And so what, what they do, they, they start asking Joseph, who is it that you serve? So he's able to witness to them about his God. He starts interpreting their dreams for them. Oh, look at him. He's still serving the Lord. He's still obeying the Lord. Even when he's going through, he still says thank you to God. Read the scriptures. It's very beautiful. Then one day, the Pharaoh who's in the palace is having a lot of dreams and nightmares at night, and he doesn't know what to do. Uh-huh. And so he says, I need all these people that I'm paying to tell me what my dreams are about. Can't nobody tell them what the dreams are about. So he starts having people killed because they can't tell him what these dreams are about. So then he gets to some of the guards who was in the prison, and they said, wait a minute, we know somebody that know how to interpret your dreams. I'm trying to help somebody. They bring Joseph. They take Joseph out of the prison. Joseph has been in the pit. Joseph has been in Potiphar's house. Joseph has been accused of rape. Joseph is now in prison, but now he is standing before the Pharaoh in a palace. Interesting how God will still be working on your behalf even when you're going through something. Mm. He interprets Pharaoh's dreams. And Pharaoh says, since you have interpreted my dreams and none of these other people that I, that, that I have employed with me can do what you do, I now put you over all of them. You are now second in command of the entire country of Egypt. <laughs> do you see that? And what God is saying is, remember what I did for him because I do the same thing for you. I'm trying to help you praise him even when you're going through. Remember what he's already done for you. You probably didn't go through exactly what Joseph went through, but I promise you, you done been through some things. And what Jesus and what God is saying right here in this text, he's saying, remember what I've already done for you. That's how you can praise me. He done already brought you through some stuff. Yes, he has. I promise you he has. He has already got you through some stuff. Begin to just say thank you, God, for what you've already done for me. I ain't done. Then he talks about Moses. <laughs> Interesting with Joseph. Joseph forgives his family who threw him in the pit. And then he brings his whole family to Egypt and gets them set up in beautiful homes. Oh, how forgiveness work. Then he gets them set up. But watch this. God had it set up. So that he was fulfilling a promise that Abraham had already gave through Joseph to get the family of uh, the, the children of Israel to Egypt. Because he already knew that he was going to send somebody named Moses. I'm trying to preach this thing. Then he got Moses there. Moses, who was one. Moses says, watch this. Moses says, Moses, um, um, he, 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 he got a st 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 stuttering problem. <laughs> 
Y'all thought I was messing up my speech. I was trying to, you know, illustrate this thing. M -m -m Moses has a, a, a stuttering problem, so he gets his, 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 his brother Aaron to come with him. And then they get to the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh has a hard heart, and he doesn't want to do, he, he's treating the slaves bad. The people of Joseph is who they are. They've grown and grown and grown and grown. Remember, there's a promise that God gave Abraham. And this is the promise that's going on. He has given it to him. He's given it to him. But they don't know what's about to happen. Pharaoh, what he does, he continues to be hard on them. God, I'm trying to make bricks out of straw. I mean, what? <laughs> Pharaoh, so what God does... God sends plagues to Pharaoh through the whole country. Sends famines. He sends fleas. Frogs jumping everywhere. Flies messing up everything. Just messing up. Then God sends a curse. Have, un, have, have, have some of their kids were sacrificed, taken away from them. God cursed them. Uh-huh. Did you know that God will take care of your enemies for you? <laughs> All you got to do is let God work it out himself. See, 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 Moses wasn't doing nothing on his own strength. He was relying on the strength of God. He was relying on his help. And God went in and did what he did. And then Pharaoh said, get all these folk out of here and let them go. And that's how they got to the promised land. What I'm trying to tell you is, remember what he has already done for you. Has he brought you out of some situations? Has he brought you out of some problems that you have? God has already been working on your behalf. And what he's saying is, if you're going to praise him, praise him for what he's already done. Praise him through a song. Praise him. Just, just begin to tell God how great he is. Begin to tell God, I thank you for your strength. Begin to tell God, this is what you already done for me, and I'm so thankful. I got one more scripture, and I'm done, because that's what the text is. One more scripture. Here it is, verse number six. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham... His chosen ones, the children of Jacob. Last point and I'm done. Praise him because he chose you. Praise him because he chose you. Praise him because he chose you. Did you know that God chose you when you was in your mother's womb? Did you know that God chose you before he even created this earth? Did you know that God chose you before anything? He already had chose you to die for you. Okay, okay. Um, um, uh, in my neighborhood back in the day, we would have something called a, a, a street ball, right? Pick up basketball. Right. And so so what happens is when, when you play a street ball, you can go out there and you can, uh, you know, you shoot for captains. Right. The first two people hit, they are they are able to choose who they want on their team. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so and so what I would do, I would go out there early and start working on my jump shot because I wanted to get the best people that was on the field to come onto my team. They did not even know that I was out there practicing before they even got there. See, sometimes God will prepare before He even gets you. Okay, okay. And so and so I'm out here practicing. I'm out here practicing shooting my shot because I already have in mind who I'm going to get. I already have in mind who I am going to choose. Watch this. They didn't even know I was going to choose them. And that's exactly what I'm saying, how God has chosen you. Praise him because he chose you before you were even born. You didn't even know. Before you got to this world, God had already chose you. God say praise him because he chose you. Praise him because he died on a cross for you. Praise him because he went to a hill called Calvary for you. Praise him because he died for you. Praise him because his blood shed it for you. Praise him because he loves you so much. Praise God for everything that he has done for you. Praise him because when he coming back, he coming to get you too, baby. Praise him because he is so great. 
Just begin to say, thank you, God, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, God, for choosing somebody like me. Thank you, God, for taking me out this crazy world. Thank you, God, for just giving me your strength, even, even when I didn't have enough strength for myself. Thank you, God. This holiday season, just begin to just say, thank you, God, for everything you've done for me. Yeah, we're going through a whole bunch of stuff. We're going through a health pandemic. We're going through a lot of racial tension. But I promise you this, Joseph was going through some, some, some crazy stuff too. I promise you this, Moses was going through some crazy stuff too. But I got you, I, I need you to understand this, God still had his hands on the whole situation. And I know we're in the crazy times right now, but I'm trying to tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to the preacher. He still got his hands on us. Amen. Amen. That, that is my word that God has given me to give to you. Praise and proclaim his name. I'm now turning you over to Pastor Henry Lucas. How y'all doing? I want to <laughs> I want to thank Pastor Ma for the word, um, just catapulting us into this series of being Thanksgiving and giving God praise. I hope we can take away some important things tonight, just to praise God in song, uh, seek His sake. His face in prayer um, and just continue to create a culture of praise and worship. Um, so tonight, uh, I'm up here for three reasons. I'm not going to hold you all along. The first is communion. Um, as we get into communion, I want to give us a big picture of why. I believe that uh, Apostle Paul does that in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. Um, and it reads, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, so if you have your bread, we're going to do this in remembrance of Jesus. Uh, he gave his, his body for us on Calvary. Um, he was brutally uh, assassinated for us so we can be saved and forgiven. So if you, you have your, your, your body, the body of Jesus, your bread, um, do it now in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hope you don't hear me smacking. But uh, as we continue, it says, uh, in the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup and proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this cup represents the new covenant that is established by Jesus' blood that washes us and cleanses us from our sin and unrighteousness. Uh, if you have your, your your cup that represents Jesus' blood, mine, mine is a little hard. I might do it off camera, but if you have your cup, uh, do it in remembrance of Jesus as he shed his blood for us on camera. All right. So we did this in remembrance of Jesus, um, and we proclaim his death until he comes. Um, so the, the next uh, part of our service that we will go to is giving. Uh, so this was communion, that was communion, now we're giving. Uh, like Amon said, that uh, this weekend we served the community of Conway. We paid hundreds of dollars for candy. Uh, we gave the community popcorn. They came, they enjoyed it, we enjoyed it. Um, and that's what we want to do here at New Generation. We want to serve our community and even uh, have opportunities to share the gospel. You saw the picture of Amon, uh, Coach Kuhn, uh Ken, they shared the gospel with a family in Conway, and we were able to do that uh, by having this event and by giving. So please uh, give uh, to New Generation Church. Uh, finally, I, I just want to pray for us. Um, like Ma said, we, it's a lot going on with coronavirus and uh, the election and racism. Uh, it's a lot going on. It's probably more than I didn't even name, but I just want to pray for us. I'm going to close this out and let you all uh, enjoy the rest of your night. So, Father, God, we thank you for um, this word. God, we just pray that you give us wisdom on how to praise you through song and, and seek your face um, in prayer. God, help uh, our families and our church 
be a people who praise you in all that we do. Help us give you thanks. Um, even though we're going through uh, crazy times and some uh, bad circumstances with election and uh, pandemic and so many other things, God, help us even praise you with what's going on. God, uh, change our heart and touch our hearts and just help us glorify you in the way that we praise and uh, love you. So, God, we pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.